My name is Dr. Daniel Fairbanks. I am the Dean of Science and a Professor of Biology at Utah Valley University in the United States. My specialty is genetics and much of my research has focused on human genetic variation uh, in people throughout the world. I've written a book called Everyone is African, How Science Explodes the Myth of Race. And the principal function of that book is to show that in fact, race is much more of a social construct than it is a biological one. Ultimately, all humans originated in Africa and then through a series of great diasporas uh, spread throughout the earth. The genetic patterns display that uh, or, or provide evidence of these, of these diasporas. And as a consequence, uh, there really is no such thing genetically as race. It's much more complex, much more interwoven, an interwoven genetic tapestry that we see among, uh, among people throughout the earth. The outward genetic variation that we see that we usually associate with race, such as hair color, skin color, uh, other features that, that we as people, because we are so attuned to making those distinctions, are in fact genetic, they are inherited. But the cause of them is really just a very small subset of the variation. Of course, it's variations in DNA are associated with variations in things like skin color, hair color, and so forth. And because of what we know of history, we can look at somebody and say, this person is probably from India or Africa or, uh, or Europe, or perhaps a better way to say it would be not to say that that individual is from that place, but their ancestor, ancestry is. And we are attuned in a way that allows us to to identify that, but we have to recognize what science tells us, that that is just a very small subset of all the variations that we have. And in fact, there are many outward variations that uh, we see in people uh, that we see worldwide. You know, just by looking at a person at how tall an individual is, that's an inherited characteristic. It varies among people. And yet we never tend to associate that at least in most cases, with a particular region. And in fact, let's take a look at Africa. Some of the tallest people in the world are the Maasai. Some of the shortest people in the world are, uh, are from the pygmy populations. And yet elsewhere in the world, we see all of this variation in height. It's not something that we typically associate with it. Let's address the genetic tests that many people take now that seem to identify one's race. For instance, I took a, a test by one of the companies and it, uh, it stated that I am 100% European. And yet, if I look at my own ancestry and at least one of my lines, I have 12 generations in North America. Does that make me North American native? Uh, or do we go back to my ancestors who came from, from Europe, in fact, predominantly Great Britain and, and Holland, and, uh, and then I identify my race, so-called race as being European, or do we go back farther in time, in which case my ancestors would have been Middle Eastern, or even farther would have been African. And in fact, the title of the book is Everyone is African, because all humanity originated in, in Africa, and at least 85% of the genetic variation that we have comes from that time when all humans were in Africa. These genetics tests only sample a very small subset of the variation to attempt to identify one's ancestry. But even then, there are very few people who could be classified as being from one very small contained region because humans are very mobile, have been, always have been very mobile and moving around the, uh, the earth a lot. And as a consequence, most people's genetics backgrounds or ancestry is much more mixed. And so for that reason, it's better to think of ancestry, which is much more complex and, and I think beautiful, than it is to categorize people as, being, as belonging to a specific race. Uh, we truly are just a single human race that has, uh, uh, that is all of uh, one origin and one origin that's in Africa.